today is the 17th of March 2017. It is 10 years since the storm of 2007 that occurred on the morning of the 19th of March and the 20th of March 2007. We are revisiting the places and we start today with our first part in this series that I'm making um, and we start at Willard Beach to look at the remnants of what is left from that storm and we discuss it and we will um, play a bit with the theory as well. This is a casual look at it. I'm trying to be as informative as possible and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to show you lots of clips. Standing now at Willard Beach. Willard Beach is just in front of me, and I'll show you a glimpse just now. But we're more interested for the moment with our story of what's behind me towards the north of Willard Beach. There in the corner is an old house that has been dilapidated since 2007. The, the clue is obviously that this happened during the storm. But that is the most visible remnant of that storm and now it's 10 years on 17th March 2017 today 10 years on and the house is still in that state and we're going to visit that but we're going to visit something else first so that I can start my story there so you can understand what happened here and what impact it had and what immensity it had Okay, and as I said Willard Beach is this side and I'm going to show you much more about Willard Beach. You will also see a few versions of me because I've shot this over a period of time. So it'll be, you, maybe you'll enjoy it. <laughs> There's a much younger me in this video as well because I'm not going to retrace all those steps again. And uh, it makes it interesting because that's my vlog and that's what I do. Enjoy this trip. There's evidence of the storm. People have propped up with polyethylene sandbags to protect the, the houses from another disaster like this. The biggest issue with this storm was the fact that it eroded the back line of the beach. It actually took away a lot of, of the soil that was on property. And we were talking about this house, which is the one here, there, that I showed just now. But a lot of people here build on the cliffs, obviously because they want to see view. It's a beautiful setting to build your house in. And you can see here what the repercussions can be. We had heavy rainstorms recently, and this is partially due to that. I don't know how much the ocean contributed, they could probably tell you. A lot of the protection that they put against the tides is lying here instead of there where they put it originally. So it's not even very functional when this ocean comes in force. Now on the 12th of March, which was last Sunday, it was full moon and there was another event where the waves were extremely strong. In Durban, the water washed over the promenade into the parking area. Some guys put clips on YouTube and call it a mini tsunami. But it was quite shocking. It was not a true tsunami, but it was shocking. And people were surprised by that. 
Now obviously that also happened here and that is part of the problem that you see here. It's a combination of issues. I'm not going to say too much about this house now because we're coming back to it. I first want to take you up there on top of those rocks. So we're on top of the rocks in the background's old house there. You can see how high we are above sea level here. We also about 10 to 12 meters up here at least. So it's quite high above sea level. And here behind me is what interests me all the time. This has been here since 2007. This has been washed open like that. There's a lot of uh, shell deposits there, which is very interesting. I'll show you the original clips here in between. At some time in the, in the history of this earth, these shells have been deposited here, yeah, probably under sea level. That's my assumption. I don't know the details. I would like to know that. What concerns us now is that in 2007, this was washed open by the waves up at this point, which is quite amazing. It's not so easy to see this anymore. It's not as clear because this has been worn out now over 10 years. Uh, but obviously when it was exposed, it was very clear the shells laying in this layers and layers and layers of shells. Pure shell material. I think some people feed this to their chickens. Now they were talking of waves of about 8.5 meters. 8.5 meters. Now this is higher than 8.5 meters, but obviously the force that it comes up with can extend that quite higher up, provided there's enough force behind that wave. And that's obviously what happened here. That's how far it got. Here behind me you see Santorini, which I mentioned in some of my other videos. You will see the other videos as well. I always come back. It's at the back of Thompson's Bay, across the hill of Thompson's Bay, where we will also spend a lot of time. If you look at my clips here, you will see how the foundations were eroded. I hope the sound is clear today. It's quite windy. I hope you can hear me. The sand eroded quite close to the foundations there. That was actually a scary thing to see. Luckily, they could save that building. It's, it's a very famous building. It's a beautiful little private beach here as well. It's a lovely place to live if you have a place here and you actually have a very nice space here. And there on the southern side, Woolard Beach. Woolard Beach also took a knock. Same thing, but I don't think it was as bad as in other places. But it was still bad, you know. The whole Lifesavers hut was washed, was broken down. It just collapsed completely. They built a beautiful new one day. They repaired this place wonderfully. So you can't see any of that. There's a lot of clips here. It's, it's a spectacular, beautiful place. Upper market. They also hold a yearly international surf competition here, which is quite spectacular. Uh, it's around about June. Just from the clips you'll see what happened uh, in some of the other videos I will I point back this way so you also see more here. So enjoy that. Um, that's a part of Wallard Beach.
I want to tell you more about the storm, but I'm going to find a place that's less windy because the wind's affecting me now. Before I make a fool of myself to try to tell you exactly what happened here, more scientifically, I'd rather read from a paper which called the storm surge of 19 March 2006, which is wrong, it's 2007, on the east coast of South Africa by Ian Hunter, Janis Tander and Stel de um, I'll reference it at the bottom of my video as well. It was, it's, it was produced at the South African Weather Service. It says here in the introduction, on Sunday, the 18th of March 2007, a semi-stationary cut-off low centered approximately 500 kilometers south of Durban and it was associated with wind speeds of up to 60 knots on its southwestern perimeter. The resultant southerly to southeasterly swell peaked at roughly the same time as the equinoctical spring, high tide early the following morning, the mo Monday the 19th of March. There was extensive damage to coastal infrastructure with initial repair costs estimated at roughly half a billion rand. So uh, obviously it was new moon on that Sunday, on that Monday actually, on that Monday. And uh, high tide's normally about four o'clock, four o'clock uh, in the morning. This storm hit at five o'clock in the morning. So it co coincided with the high tide. So the swell caused by this uh, swelling uh, from, from this um, low pressure system cutoff um, coincided and it obviously caused this massive surf that, uh, that hit the coastline. And those two things actually, apparently most of the damage happened at about five o'clock that morning. Many people were probably not even aware of, of that. So by the time people woke up, most was, be done, was done already, except maybe some of the people who live in these houses, I'm not laughing, but um, they might have realized that something is, is coming. So that's in brief there. You can go and have a look at this. I'll reference it. There's some other papers by Smith uh, et al. They have done some work on uh, the erosion at the back. They predict when what might happen in the future if we have a similar situation. People have obviously have strengthened the, the line as far as they can, but there's still some weaknesses. It will probably happen again. It will probably cause damage again. Because in Belito, people tended to uh, develop right onto the high water line because they obviously want to have a nice view. We have this nice, these nice cliffs here where people can sit high and dry and look over the beach and the sea and that is one of the things that cause problems. So now we're back at this house because that's the thing I need to discuss after I discussed all the other things. Um, this has been an eyesore for many years because they might be some legal issues involved here, which is none of my business, you know, how it goes with these things. So um, I'm not sure, I don't think the owner is allowed to, to restore this house because it's extending, it's probably extending into over the shoreline. Um, in any case, it won't be a wise thing to do because this house will always be vulnerable, except if you can make a drastic plan here with um, erosion protection. You probably need a lot of those bags, as I showed you before. Now, uh, when we came here, you will see my, my wife of that time and my daughter is on many of these clips. We came here in 2007. We were busy. Our house was busy being built, luckily far from the shore. And um, we came to visit to see what happened. And we visited all these beaches and we, we took a, I took a lot of photographs and this will be in the five videos that I'm going to show you. I will do comparisons everywhere. Here was a bathroom lying on the beach. There was part of the Porsches there were lying on the beach. The whole front of the house basically were lying on the beach. It actually extended further forward. So uh, it's dilapidated. It's not, it's not, it, can't, it can't be repaired because it, it has a dangerous structure at the moment. It's just sitting there. I'm not sure if there's any orders. It actually just needs to be demolished to restore some kind of sense of beauty here. But as I said, there might be issues. And those issues obviously affect what the future will be. Um, further on back to where we came from, close to where, where I show you the bags, was a lot of wood. I'll show you a lot of those clips on the way here as well. So enjoy them.
wood was, uh, you know, wood tended to, to accumulate in these corners where the sea actually takes, makes these huge loops. The, the, the surf comes in and it, it, it takes a loop on the embankment and it loops back. And obviously with the storm, those things were quite big and it brought the wood and accumula uh, st stapled them against uh, obstructions like rocks and so on. So we had this everywhere. There was another, another section like that in Thompson's Bay. Thompson's Bay is that way, across the hill. This is Willard Beach, and behind Willard Beach is Boulder Bay, and uh, Shaka's Rocks also this way, and Sheffield Beach. They're all going to be done in the videos. There's uh, quite spectacular uh, images there. It will bring back memories for people who were here. It will also show people who have never been here what it looks like. And I also tried to show some of the beauty of this place. And by the way now, if you, if you like this video, please like it, please subscribe to this channel so that you get notified of, of when the new ones come out. I'm going to try to release them every three days. So the first one will hopefully be released um, by, by Sunday the 19th of March or maybe Monday morning. Um, it depends on quite a few things. And then every three days I'll release the rest. If you subscribe, you will, uh, you will be notified and you can have a look at them. And that's how you can keep yourself up to date with this. And I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I really need your support. And I, I actually love to do this for people. I love them to enjoy it. But obviously, I need to get something back. So subscriptions is the best. Support my advertisers. That's also a good thing. But in general, just subscribe to my channel. That's how it starts.